Thanks for tuning in to more horse racing coverage on Horsepower PSN for a Thursday night. Uh, it is September the, what is it, the 13th, John? Tomorrow is the 13th. Lucky Friday the 13th. Oh, okay. Very interesting. Uh, well, it's not a Saturday. That's when we're going to be. <laughs> okay. That's when we're going to be. Uh, uh, racing on the cards that we're going to talk about at Churchill. Uh, as you can see, uh, Chad is not here because he is uh, off buying horses. So, uh, what is that like a, 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 a multiple day affair? It's like uh, two weeks, actually. I guess. Wow. So, so, yeah. And where is that? Kentucky, Keelan. Of course. So, we're going to get a whole bunch of stories when, next time we see Chad about how his trip went. Uh, but this is also the time of year where things are, uh, you know, we've had our ups, we've had our downs, and we're going to have a major up in November. So before we get there, uh, we have some of these weeks. Matter of fact, Woodbine is like the big day on Saturday, right? Woodbine, I believe. Yeah, they have a, yeah, they have a bunch of turf races that are interesting, but uh, we opted to stay in the United States. Oh, and by the way, uh, so I, obviously I was watching the, the races that we uh, did last week uh, at Kentucky Downs. And I we had ne I don't remember ever doing it. Well, I'm sure we had done it once before, but I don't recall it. But, yeah, I mean, wow. Trying to figure out who in the world. I mean, they've got the, they've got the, the camera you, angle. Excuse me. Did I put you on alert before? <laughs> did, I you, did I tell you yes or no? I think that's worse yeah, than – uh, million dollars in purses and they can't get a damn drone or something to give you different camera angles oh my lord it's just terrible i don't know how I, it's like the, it's like you have to be glued to your horse like you can't miss a step because you have to find out exactly yeah, where he switch, is they, they switch the camera angles and you lose them anyway and then even when they're coming down uh the stretch you, you don't know who the hell's leading you're just looking at <laughs> horses coming at you Unless you know who your horse is and what his colors are, you have no shot. It's terrible. Yeah, so that was last week. And uh, this week at Churchill, uh, we're going to handicap two out of the three. Actually, we've got, uh, let's see, we've got one of the three graded stakes races. Uh, that is the grade three uh, Aroquis. So that's Iroquois, the, Iroquois. Iroquois. That's a lot better. Uh, and, and that's <laughs> coming up. Uh, that's going to be race number 10. That's what's going to be available to viewers here on YouTube. But the first race we're going to handicap is actually the, Louis, the Louisville Thoroughbred Society Stakes. And this is race 9. It's a 6 furlong race. And this is the one that we're going to start off with on Patreon. So if you are not a Patreon here on our channel, uh, we're going to say goodbye to you in just about a minute. Again, $5 a month. That's it. You get all of our coverage that is not seen here for free on YouTube. You can cancel at any time. Uh, and if for some reason you just can't do that, well, please make sure you subscribe because until we get to 1,000 subscribers here on the channel, then we cannot provide all of the content for free here on YouTube. But once we reach 1,000, we will. Uh, so that's why if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Just hit that subscribe button. And also let us know if you have any questions or comments, which we will always be sure to get back to you as soon as we can. But let's go ahead, John, and uh, see what we've got in store for us on Patreon. All right. So six furlong race. This should go off about five o'clock on Saturday. And you got the morning line. Now you've got two really well, especially with, uh, Skelly, the, the 10 horse being the morning line favorite at two to one is sheets wise sheets sheet numbers wise is clearly the horse to beat and then you've got the two the other like the second choice close the game sugar um but then after that uh you've got some other options but we'll, we'll just start with skelly because skelly the 10 horse i mean you're talking about a horse that has a whole you know several fours and doesn't seem to ever get outside single digits yeah, but the problem with him is he's been beaten at short prices his last two races. If you remember on the show, he's all of a sudden established a new habit. He's having some problems getting out of the gate. You know, he was he was away slowly in his last couple of races. I think drawing the extreme outside box is going to help him. Unfortunately, you know, if you want to beat him, and I'm trying to beat him, I like a horse in this race at a price. I would have much rather him be drawn inside. Being drawn outside when you're the speed, you get to control things. 
But again, if he's up to those old habits of where he's getting left in the gate, you know, being drawn outside will help him. Ricardo Santana sticks for Steve Smusen. The horse is terrific. He's 10 for 17 lifetime. He is only one for three at Churchill. He's 10 for 16 at the distance. He wins a lot of races and he runs a lot of fast numbers, but he has been disappointing in both of his last two races at short prices. Yeah, and just taking a look at his starting his um, his uh, position post position, I don't I don't see anything close to ten. So no, well, usually he's in shorter field size. You know, the last time he had post ten, I think was in Dubai or in the other part of the world when he broke from pro post ten. But that's okay. a different kind of race than it is here. Listen, he was in six last week, three, five, three. So he's basically been inside and always had horses outside of him. Yep. Today, that's not going to be the case. And by the way, at that race at Dubai was his uh, worst cheat number of a nine. Yeah. <laughs> so if that He's means... Second, though, that day. Yeah, that's true. Um, all right, so I'm going to guess who the horse is that you're going to... You want with the, with the good price, okay? Go ahead. You want the seven. I love the seven. <laughs> <laughs> See, we know each other. Uh, we've been together. We've been married too long. <laughs> so yes, happy is a choice. Is a twelve to one shot with a five in March. Uh, also, a bunch of single digits over the last six. Yeah, he's one for two at Churchill. He's three for seven at the distance. And what's best of all is he's twelve to one. And it, this appears to be a lot. Uh, certainly enough speed in this race to set things up for his late run. And if you get anywhere near that price, it's a must play. Not only that, he's been stabled at. Churchill Downs because his last three works have all been at Churchill and the trainer had a terrific terrific Saratoga I believe he was five for eight or six for nine something like that and uh, he's a terrific young trainer and this is just another good horse he has four for ten lifetime so yeah so because uh, Skelly so you're saying besides Skelly uh, there are several horses that uh, want the lead then huh well, it looks like uh, the six hear me song wants the lead. It looks like Disco Ball definitely wants the lead. So there's going to be buddy. some speed. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, my buddy. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, some. So that hopefully will work into uh, favor of Happy is a choice. Again, going off right now at 12 to 1. And really, after not sure what happened to him uh, when he missed last year, but ever since he came back after a year off, he's been a different horse. So no question about it. Listen, there's another horse in the race that deserves a lot of respect. The two horse closed the game sugar. You know, this horse traveled to Del Mar last time and ran in the Bing Crosby, finishing second to the chosen Vron, who never seems to get beat, huh. even though he got beat in his last race. Really? Short, yeah, he, he lost his, his last race at a short price at Del Mar. But get running second to the chosen Vron, nothing to be embarrassed about. Again, I would like this horse too. But he's nine to five. So the name of the game is looking for value. Win, lose, or draw. The seven is the value in the race. Let's uh, talk about some of these others because there are some, like for instance, the one, the 12 to one shot. This is one of those up and down horses. Uh, you know, you got eight, then 12, seven, and 12, nine. And you expect then, based on this trend, that he's not going to have a good race on. Uh, Saturday, and you also have some potential bounce horses. You've got the three Cyclone Mischief. Wasn't exactly. this uh, one of those horses that was talked up a couple of years ago? Yeah, he was supposed to be real nice. Listen, he ran well last time out when he ran the seven, but that's a top. The four My Buddy B is off the top. The five Disco Ball is off the top. Yep. The six Hear Me Song is off the top. So you got a lot of horses in this race that figure to bounce. Where happy is the choice, I think, figures to repeat or make a forward move. And again, he was twelve to one. That's why I went with him. Yeah, I would have. I, I'd have a little bit more confidence with Disco Ball, uh, but the seven-year-old deal concerns me because it, you know, and because he's had four eights and maybe he's in a nice little roll, thirteen, ten, eight last three. But seven years old, I don't know if he can get any. Going to catch up to him, Greg. With all these sevens at, at the age of seven, uh, all these eights, I should say, he's running at the age of seven. Have to catch up with him. All right. So, yeah, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of reason to discount some of these horses uh, in theory. So uh, the seven is the choice. Yeah, I'm going to use the seven and exact is with the one Gulfstream way, the two close, close the game sugar and the 10 skelly seven with one, two, 10. And you can reverse them as well. There's plenty of room. 
yeah, and I have uh, no reason to go anywhere else. Um, by the way, here my here my song the six again. He's coming off a new top. I know the last time he had a seven, uh, which was a previous top, bounced to an eleven uh, the next time. So he's coming off a six. Um, Listen, he's had some time off, and obviously yeah. he you know, he has the time off, which certainly is a help for him. But he's also a six year old. You know, the seven's a four-year-old, so he has room to still get better. Most horses don't get better at the age of six. So that was the problem I had with the six. Here's my song. I just think that he's got to react off of that race. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right. Again, I got no reason to uh, bet against the seven myself. Uh, that really sounds like the bargain of the race. So let's move on to uh, race number 10. And that means we return here to YouTube. Uh, and again, if you want to check out what we talked about with race number nine over on Patreon, uh, you can check it out. Just uh, click the uh, link that we provide in the description area. And by the way, if you see the, 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 the more in the description area, you got to click that. And then a whole big box pops up and all our links are in there. So keep that in mind, too, because sometimes... Uh, you have a problem finding out where we keep all these links. So if, if you see the more, it'll be there. Just click it, and that's where all the links will be. And I'll put a link also uh, in the comment section pinned to the top to make it easy. Okay, so... And hit subscribe. Hit subscribe. Oh, How yeah. many of you What do we got, 300 to go? Yeah, we still. It seems like we've been over 300 for like about uh, three months. So, yeah, we got to get things going here. Uh, or else we'll have a try. We're also going to try a different strategy. I don't know. Our strategies are changed every six months. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is the grade three race. And uh, so th is this considered like one of those, because it's a two-year-old race. So these are horses that we may be seeing in the triple crown, uh, uh, whatever you call it. The, uh, yes, the triple crown run. Guess what, Greg? This is the first race of the year where points will be allotted for the Derby. Oh. So. I don't know how many, but I was reading somewhere that uh, the winner, I guess the first three place finishers on, on that run one, two, three in this race will be getting points for the Derby. The only problem is, let's be honest, it's kind of early. We're in September and they're already talking about a race that's nine months yeah. away. I doubt maybe two or three of these, these may be around by Derby time. Nine months in horse racing is an eternity plus. So there's a mile and uh taking a look at the uh, what they've listed as the morning line favorite looks like the five the five to two shot and that is uh owen almighty with a red uh, ortiz jr on board uh and and you can see why i mean he's got two races at 12 and a 13 so it's very impressive to come out with a 12 and 13 uh, to back it up so that's not bad two wins um, he's two for two. He's done well. He went backwards a point. The problem yeah. with this race is, and usually we try to honestly to avoid races like this because they're lightly raced horses. What does one race really mean? A lot of times, you know, you've been looking at sheets long enough to say a horse goes 18 and then in his first on, then we'll run a 12 in career start number two. Not every horse is squeezed for their best performance first out. Some trainers do like to win early other horse trainers like to you know for horses to just gradually improve on their own so that's why betting races like this are usually tough but there was a re the reason i picked this race to do is because there was a horse that ran in saratoga the number 10 horse jonathan's way you know there was one ultra impressive two-year-old race with a horse named fierceless um he got he broke from the rail that day he got left he rushed up anyway he came back in the hopeful he lost his shoe that day. He ran second. Anyway, other than that horse, this horse ran one of the most impressive races I've seen all Saratoga meet. And I really just like got a liking for this horse watching that race. The horse was terrific. Phil Bauer, the trainer, does a great job. This is another horse uh, that has a work over the track. And again, I think this horse is going to repeat that 12 or possibly make a forward move. He's stretching out to a mile. He can handle it. He's drawn well. You know, it's a one-turn mile. It's not two turns. It's kind of a, a turn and a quarter because they have a crazy layout there at Churchill, their mile race. It's out of a shoot. But uh, I was just so impressed with his first win visually 
that I would come back and give this horse another shot to make a forward move today. Yeah, the 10 is actually the second choice and He's deserves it. That's a fair price. I mean, you yeah. know, listen, a horse like the four, uh, authentic strike, ran once and ran a 13. Yep. The five has a 12 and 13, like you said. The seven has a 13. So there are other horses, obviously, that are all within striking distance. You know, even horses like the one who has a 15, the three has a 15. There's a lot of ways to go. I ended up on the 10 because of that impressive win. If you get a chance, go back, watch the replay. It's worth looking at. All right. That sounds like a good idea, especially, as you said, I mean, the the, the horses that have actually made a forward move include the one, a 20 to a 15, the two, 24, 16, 14, even though the 16, 14 was on turf. Uh, we also, let's see, have the eight, went from a 22 to a 15. Um, well, that's the whole point. We were talking about what does one race really mean? Nothing, because you just said it, 22, 15. So a lot of these horses make that big uh, move in their second start, you know, and uh, especially if they have some time off, I'm hoping Jonathan's away fits the bill. Uh, the 12 is a six to one shot. And uh, he started with an 18 at Churchill, then a 14 at Churchill, both wins, and then came out of Churchill, bounced to a 17. So you would think then the 12 will revert back, or at least you would hope he's going to revert back to maybe a positive, get ahead of that 14. But the only thing is 12th position and only 6 to 1. Well, 12th position isn't the problem. The good news is he's two for two over Churchill, so we know one thing. He absolutely loves the track, so yeah. that's a good thing. You know, you want to use him, you certainly can. That's the whole point. You can make a case for a lot of horses in here. Why go with the favorite? Yeah, that's true, uh, because you would think also, uh, unless he turns out to be one of the top uh, well, horses we'll next year, out. we that's will. Fun. Yeah. He's probably uh, maybe uh, I know it's all early, but maybe he's got a dud or at least a non-winning race out of him. Uh, you can't win them all again unless you just happen to be that diamond in the rough. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll bet against that. Uh, and also uh, we take a look at, um, as you said, the other one that might be interesting because of the odds is because you got the 13 on the four at 12 to one. So yeah. uh, that's kind of surprising. Why do you think it's only 12 to one after 13? Well, he ran at Ellis Park, where the, the the ten, for example, was ran at Saratoga. You know, even Owen Almighty, I know, ran at uh, Ellis Park as well. It's not as glamorous a track as Churchill. You know, I don't know why they just uh, that that. And what's really surprising is they knew the horse was a good horse. He won off even money his first time out. Yeah. So, and not easy to win at seven furlongs. So he's got a lot of reasons that uh, he could run another good one. And uh, at 12 to 1, he's a must use. I was using the 10 Jonathan's way over the four authentic strike, the five Owen Almighty, and the seven Sandman. 10, 10 over four, five, and seven. 10 over four, five, seven. And uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead then with the four. So let's do four. Uh, and uh, let's see if there are any ones. I mean, it's obviously the 10, uh, that's a no brainer. And the 12. I'll do four with 10 and 12. Four uh, with 10 and 12. Okay. Yeah, four with 10. So you're going to go with 10 over four, five, seven. And then, of course, in race number nine, um, uh, we're not going to let you know here because uh, that was on Patreon. Uh, but if you ask us nicely, uh, we might let you know. Uh, but anyway, thanks a lot, John. Appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Stay safe and be well, everybody. Thank you. Sounds good. All right. That's uh, Jonathan Hardoon. And I just want to check out to make sure, look ahead to see what's going on because we've kind of flown by here, which is nice. I mean, uh, as I've uh, kind of warned everybody, it is football season. So a lot going on on my plate. But horse racing has been something that we have been covering, John and I. And I know we kind of just goofed about it, but John and I have been doing this for a long time. I, you know, I bet you if I, if I really, really crunch the numbers – I would say we have been doing this for about 10 years. I can't even believe I'm saying that. And keep this in mind too. 10 years and we hardly ever miss a week. Imagine that. I mean, that's crazy. 10 years, hardly ever missing a week. Of course, we had a stretch about a year or two ago where our schedules got 
conflicted and John and Chad, we just couldn't do it. And that was, that was, that went on for about five weeks. That was, that, that was completely something that I had never done before where I was doing shows by myself, if you recall, uh, still using the sheets, obviously I wouldn't do any of these shows without it, but yeah, uh, it's been, uh, I, I got to add all that up and see what the heck that is because it's an awful lot of handicapping races over the years with John Hardoon. And of course, Chad joined us just a couple years ago. All right. So let me see what we got in store for next week. So next week, by the way, there's the jockey club Oaks is, uh, at aqueduct. And I, I want to remind everybody too, in, in the, the description, we've got a link of how you can acquire the sheets for the races that we handicap. Now, of course you can acquire the sheets for anything, but if you want to buy the sheets just for the races that we handicap, or you want to buy the entire card, you can do that. I've got a link in the description, so make sure you check that out. If you have any other problems finding this stuff, just let me know. But again, it's going to be there. It's always there. You just have to find it. It's not that difficult, but sometimes I know you miss it. Again, hit the more button. Another box pops open. Uh, and by the way, if you're wondering what the more is, just because there's only a certain amount of information that can fit there, the more means that there's a lot more stuff uh, and we need the extra box in order to uh, add the information, f which we do, that includes all the links. Okay, so next week, looks like we have some more Churchill. We've got a grade three Dogwood. So that's it at Churchill next week. We also have a grade three Princess Rooney at Gulfstream. And I don't know I know we've uh, done the Princess Rooney before, so it looks like a Gulfstream. We haven't done the Gulfstream in a while. So maybe Gulfstream is in the cards. Because once we start talking Gulfstream, uh, then... Uh, because we are getting to that time of year. Uh, we also have a big one at, Pen at Pennsylvania Parks. We've got the Pennsylvania Derby. So we have the Grade 1 Pennsylvania Derby. We have the Grade 1 Cotillion and the Grade 2 Gallant Bob with the Grade 3 Turf Monster and the Grade 3 Greenwood Cup. So that's at Parks next week. Those are, that, That's the track where all the big races are going to be. So again... We've got a Churchill Grade 3, a Gulfstream Grade 3, and we got big races at parks coming up uh, for us to choose next week right here on Horsepower PSN. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Questions, comments, just fire away. And uh, best of luck out there this weekend. If you're a football enthusiast, if you like to gamble on football, then head on over to Prime Sports Network. Head on over to Our Lads. That's the channel uh, that I produce the football programs. We've got the handicapping programs with legendary Hall of Fame sports handicappers, just like John for Horse Racing. So you can check that out. Mark Lawrence, Jim Feist. Uh, we have the Playbook Experts YouTube channel where we handicap football games every Wednesday, even though we did it Thursday this week. Every Thursday on the Our Lads football YouTube channel. That's where uh, we record a weekly NFL and college football handicapping show. So if you're big into football and you like to wager on uh, the NFL or college football, check out Prime Sports Network. But most importantly, check out the Our Lads football channel and also Playbook Experts. And uh, we should have a link in the description for that as well. I have to, if I haven't put it in there, I should. So best of luck this weekend, and we'll see you again next Thursday. Hopefully we'll have Chad back. Again, he's on the road. Uh, we weren't able to hook up with him because of it. Sometimes we're able to hook up with him, but sometimes it just gets to the point where we don't want to put him on and have all this you know, interference, and it's just, it's just not good. So we just, Chad, just deal with what you got to deal with, uh, kick some ass, buy some cool horses, and we'll talk to you next week, just like we'll talk to you next week.